Hello, this is Ralph from Happy Dog Training and this video is about leash handling skills. I want to go over some of the basics of leash handling, how to hold leashes properly, how to hold them safely so your dog doesn't get away, how to shorten them, how to handle different types of leashes. I don't think we'll spend enough time on discussing leash handling outside the context of dog training. We should really do that before we work with dogs or before we take a dog on a walk think about how we're actually holding on to the leash because you you see people sticking their hand through a loop and then uh, wrapping the leash a hundred times around their hand um, th that's not the best approach to have control over your dog it may seem that way but it's not so we want to talk about some basic leash handling skills and these are basic leash handling skills they're not defensive leash handling skills or protection leash handling skills that would be a completely different topic so this is basic concepts of how to hold leashes how to shorten leashes how to reel them in and so forth um, first of all i didn't invent any of this so if this is your first exposure to leash handling skills don't accredit them to me i did not invent them i learned them over the years over the last uh, 10 years professional dog training or 15 years total uh, i just accumulated these skills of handling leashes and i want to share them because i think it's important so the original way that I learned how to hold the leash was from a canine handler, probably like nine, 10 years ago. And that, that's really my first exposure to a specific type of grip. And I thought that, and I thought it was a great idea and decided to just do that from that moment on and then play around with it. And I ended up doing some things on my own without further training that ended up being things that other people had actually documented and, and, and put in other documentaries, uh, uh, documentations of leash handling per se. So the people who influenced me besides the canine handler whose name I do not remember, so I can't give him credit, but the other people who influenced me in my leash handling are Michael Ellis, Ivan Balabanov, and in more recent years, definitely Chad Mackin, a lot of the pressure and release work, and Jay Jack. Um, some unique ideas there that were new to me anyway. Um, and he may not invent it either, he, he would not. But I want to go over some of those basics on a six foot leash, on a long line, and then also on a retractable leash. So let's jump in. So let's start with a basic grip. If we have a leash with a handle, we want to put the handle over our thumb. So if you look here, the handle goes over the thumb. And then I close my hand around the leash. Now this is a very secure grip. Even if I loosen up a little bit and my dog starts pulling on it, he still can't get out. It's a very secure grip. I can easily regrip it again for a very good controlled grip. So holding the leash like that is a good start. Now, you don't want to hold the leash away from your body because if your dog jerks on that leash, he's just going to be up against your arm, your biceps and your upper shoulder. That's not a lot of um, strength to hold the dog back. It's much better if you bring the leash into your body, hold it against your body, hold it close. Huh? Um, when, when players hold footballs, they don't hold them out here, they hold the ball close. So you have more control. So you hold the leash close. I like to put the hand here, the solar plexus in the middle. And if you need more control, you can place your other hand on top of it, or with long lines especially, usually a great idea if you put the other hand under it and then pull it into the body. Huh? So I have my basic grip, I put the other hand under it and then I pull it into the body. That's a very secure grip. Now there's also something about stance. So let me zoom out and show you how to change your stance to have even more control. So, as promised, let's talk about stance for a moment. Stance is important to add to your stability when you have to hold back a dog that's running or you just need to have a lot of control in general because you have a big, powerful dog. As I said earlier, we're holding the leash in this grip and we're putting it into our body like that. Now, if I stand parallel like this, I can get knocked off balance pretty easily. So standing parallel, not the best of moves. What you want to do is put one foot a little forward and the other one backwards and angle it off uh, in a perpendicular way. So have a little wider stance while still standing straight. You don't necessarily want to shift your center of gravity forward or backwards. Huh? Depends. I may shift it backwards if I have to hold something back or so, but initially I don't want to do that. I want to keep my center of gravity pretty, pretty even, but I want to lower it. So I'm going to bend my knee slightly to lower my center of gravity while still keeping it centered. 
When I say bend your knees slightly, you don't have to go down deeper, like a sumo stand or whatever, right? So you, just a little bit, just a little bit lower, lower your center of gravity, keep your hands here. That is a really solid stance. If you wanna practice this at home, assume the position that you think is the right one and have a family member try to push you over. Just put a hand on the shoulder and try to push me over. Huh? If you're standing properly like this, probably not gonna happen. If he can shove you over, adjust your stance. Maybe you lean a little bit forward. Maybe you go a little bit lower. But this is a very secure stance. Hands in, tighten your shoulders a little bit, hold on to it. You can hold the dog back that way. So now let's talk about how to reel the leash in and then also hand the leash from hand to hand. So if I wanna bring the leash in, I have my basic grip here. I run the other hand, the support hand, along the leash, bring that forward next to my hand where I'm holding, holding onto the end of it, open that real brief, place that in the hand and then close it again around everything. Now I have the rest of the leash shortened into my right hand. Now, the advantage here is I can run it back out if I have to. Huh? I can bring it back in, run it back out. Bring it back in, run it back out. It's very versatile in terms of shortening and lengthening the leash. Really important on long lines, which we're gonna talk about later. Now, if I have it in the shortened grip, what I can also do, I can also do pressure and release work with my index finger and my thumb. So if you look here, I'm coming a little closer. My index finger and my thumb, allow me to have very subtle pressure and release work. Uh, release work. Uh, pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release. Very subtle for some of the leash exercises that we're going to do. Now, next thing, if I need to pass over the leash from one hand to the other, let's say I shorten that down, I wanna maintain this, but I need to change hands for whatever reason. Here's how you go about that. So, there you go. <clears throat> You open up that hand and bring the other hand in and I reach with the hand under the leash and with a thumb under the thumb. So I bring this all the way in. Once I have this, I pull my other hand out and the leash has been transferred into the other hand. Now it's over here. Same thing if I want to go back. I come back in with the other hand under the thumb and back to my original grip. Uh, so I can pass it from left to right and we can do this also once we start locking the leash. We can also do this once we start having additional loops because it's a long line. So next thing, we're going to lock this leash because right now, well, I can run this out. I can bring it back in. I can run it out, but my dog can also pull. So this is not very secure. So here's how you secure that in this position. So if I start off my basic grip, I run the leash in, I place it just like before, no difference so far. So now comes the lock. The thumb lock is first. So the thumb lock goes like this. I rotate my hand around that leash and get the other piece of leash in there as well and regrip and close. Hmm? Now I've locked that extra piece of leash around my thumb and now it cannot be pulled out. Now I have a secure grip, I have thumb locked the additional piece. If I wanna release it, I open up, I roll that back out, and I'm back to my uh, original setup. So let me show this one more time. Bring it back in, and rotate my hand to thumb lock. Uh, and then let it back go, rotate out, there we go. Bring it back in, thumb lock. Hmm? You want to practice that so you can do this real quick. So if you're in a scenario bomb, you want to be able to thumb lock your leash rather quickly if something happens. So you have a quick way of just securing this extra piece in your hand. And again, you want to practice this with your right and your left hand. Um, you want to practice it with both hands. You want to be fluent on both sides. You never know on which hand you're going to have to leash. So now, if I have a thumb lock leash, so let me go in here, little thumb lock, come a little closer. I can pass that also over to my other hand. I do this the exact same way. The thumb goes under the thumb and the leash goes under the leash and I regrip everything and it's transferred to the other side. Huh? And there's also something you wanna be able to do without looking from one hand to the other. So you have fluent leash management as you go and you can focus on your environment versus having to look down on your hand and what it is you're doing. 
So you want to be really fluent on how to accomplish that. Huh? So now, next thing we want to do is a finger lock. A finger lock is actually my personal preference. I prefer finger locks over thumb locks. Uh, finger locks are more versatile, and you see in a moment why. But here's how a finger lock looks like. Beginning is the same. I have a grip. I have my leash. I run the leash in. I bring the leash in. I close my hand. No difference whatsoever. Okay. So let me come a little closer. Now watch this. A finger lock is done by wrapping this extra piece of leash around the index finger. It's already running over the index finger anyway here. I just have to secure it in the rest of my hand. To do this, I open up the bottom three fingers of my hand and reach up here, bring this on top, and close it back down. So now I have locked it in my hand, and there's a very secure lock. I have my original piece over my thumb, and I have my rest of my leash over my index finger. If I want to run that back out, I simply release these fingers a little bit out, and now I can run the leash backwards and close it again. Run the leash backwards and close it again. Hmm? Bring it back in. Oops, finger lock. Run it back out, run it back out, lock. Run it back out, lock. Run it back out, lock. Very versatile. Huh? Very versatile way of uh, securing a leash. So, this is the finger lock. Let me show you this a couple more times. I'm a little closer, bring the leash in, and finger lock. And slow motion. As you see during this maneuver, the extra piece of leash that was under my thumb came out. I still have a very secure grip. This is not important in this moment, the lock is here. Uh, if I now want to bring this back in, I still maintain my lock. I can fix that easily. So don't worry about that happening. So if I take these three fingers off uh, and this piece comes out because I didn't have it enough here, I didn't have enough of my finger on it at that moment, uh, and this slips out, don't worry about that. I have a secure lock with my fingers. You bring this back in afterwards. So just a little tip there not that important. Now, if I have a finger lock, I can also pass that over to my other hand just the same way I did before. No different at all. Huh? So the way I do this is I bring my index finger under the other index finger, I bring my thumb under the other thumb, and I let this go over, pull my other hand out, and close my hand. Hmm? Just like that. So in this transfer, what often happens is that you lose this additional piece here. You, you don't necessarily have this in the initial grip. Again, that's fine. You can push it back in. You have the finger lock. Uh, just make sure you maintain one of those locks. Then the other one, if it happens in the back here, it's fine. It's not that big of a problem. You can fix that right after. Okay, so that is the finger lock. One other thing that we should probably talk about is how we do pressure and release after the leash is locked, because that's a little different. So if you remember the pressure and release work that we had earlier, when the leash was shortened in my hand, it's very gently here with the index finger and the thumb, I can do very subtle work, right? so it's very easy. Now, if you go into a lock, and it's either lock, so if I go into a thumb lock, and now the leash runs out here at the bottom, it's no longer running out at the top. So pressure and release work at the bottom works like this, right? I open up here, I let go, I bring it back in. So now pressure and release work is at the bottom of the hand, while previously it was on top of the hand. If I go to a finger lock, boom, same thing. Leash runs out here at the bottom, pressure and release work right here at the bottom. So I can do pressure and release work in a lock and out of a lock. Just out of a lock, it's up here. In a lock, it's down there. Here's one other thing I want to bring up real quick, and that's a little of a pro tip. So if you have a six foot leash and you're out in the field and you decide, I want to take my leash off my dog now, I want to work off leash for whatever reason, or you're in an enclosure, you can take it off there safely. There's so many reasons to take leashes off during work, but you don't want to put this on the ground or you want to make sure you don't forget it. You want to keep it on your body so you have it with you. Even if you just walk around in a park, you take the leash off. You want to keep the leash with you. 
So a great way of storing the leash on your body, this is uh, um, something you see a lot of um, sports people do. You hang the leash around your neck, make it even on both sides, and you take the ends, take that clip, and you lock this like this, but you do this behind your body. Huh? So I bring the leash behind me, clip this together, boom, here it is. And now the leash is like a suspender style around my body. Now the advantage of storing a leash this way is if I bend forward, if I play tuck with my dog, if I feed food, if I, actually, if I move about, if I train my dog, this leash is not gonna bounce around, it's not gonna flip all over myself. So if, if, if I just had this like diagonal across my body, it will flip all over the place. It will be in the way a lot and it would bother me pretty quickly. This is a great way of storing the leash. So let's talk about long lines. Long lines are long leashes, 20, 25, 30, 50 feet long. There's so many reasons to work with long lines. I do it a lot with my clients. Um, active long line management is quite important. It prevents injury to you, prevents injury to your dog. So a couple of options when you work with a long line. First thing is, instead of holding it in your hand, you can just dump it on the ground and uh, work with your dog or have your dog run around with it. And then if you need to stop your dog, stomp on the leash. Just step on it with your foot and you got that. Eyes are you, bum, secured. Hey buddy, <laughs> now he can't go anywhere. So that's an option. If you don't have the leash in your hand, you're not an anchor point, and it's more likely or it's less likely that your dog gets tangled up on you or because of the tension that you create on the leash. So it's a much better setup. Uh, in many scenarios, you can often let the dog drag. It's kind of a backup when you teach a recall. It can be a backup when you play tug. Dragging the leash is, is always an option. If that's possible in the environment, it makes sense for the exercises that you're going to do. Now, many exercises and in many locations, dropping the leash is not the best approach. And if you have to hold on to the leash, there's a couple of things you can do. The first is kind of the lazy way, and you have to be vigilant when you do it the lazy way. So if I just hold on to the leash, and I want to hold on to the leash with this secure grip that we talked about, the same thing, well, thumb, boom, and then the second hand and pull it into your body. So that is kind of the grip you want to use on, on a, any leash, but especially on long line work, you want to have both hands on your body. And you want to assume the stance I talked about earlier with the angle and the lower center of gravity. Because now your dog is 25 or more foot of leash, so if he runs against that, that's in a lot of force. So a 67 pound dog on a 20 foot long line taking off and you have to hold him back, yeah, you better be ready. In the right stance with the right grip, it's not a problem. But you gotta do it the right way. Now, when I said the lazy way, the lazy way is, is just hold on to the leash, the end, and do nothing else, the leash is dragging. So when the leash is dragging, it gets tangled up under your dog's legs. Now, I per se don't really care if that happens as long as the leash is not wrapped around the dog's leg. The moment the leash is wrapped around, you have an injury risk. The dog could break his leg if he does the wrong thing in the, right, in the wrong moment. So if I see that, let's say the, le the leash is extended all the way out and it's wrapped around the dog, I will step on that leash and I will walk on that leash one foot after the other, maintaining the length so my dog cannot take off with that leash. He can't run away anymore. He is held back basically at a distance. So walking on the leash prevents it from being uh, a jerk into, into that wrapped around leg now. It prevents or reduces the risk of injury. The moment I get to my dog, I relax him, I take the leash, unwrap him and go from there. So that's an option. The other thing is if you have the leash on the ground in the lazy way, make sure you're always in front of that leash and it's never wrapped around anything, not wrapped around your leg, not behind your leg, not behind of the legs of a partner that you may be working with, because you will get mowed down sooner or later by that leash. If your dog takes off towards something and he jerks forward and the leash behind you, floop, there you go. Every year, a good number of people break their legs on long lines. So don't be one of those people. That's not a good idea. Now, the last way, and that's probably the best way, but it's more involved. You have to pay more attention. And when I work with clients, I have to admit, I tend to not do that because I have to focus on what they're doing versus what I'm doing. But the better way when I work by myself, I do this, is to maintain the leash 
actively and keep it off the ground. Keeping a long line off the ground with a dog that's in motion is an active uh, process. It's not something where you can slack off even for one second. You have to be alert and constantly bring the leash in, let it back out, bring the leash in, let it back out. But now you're doing it on 20, 30 foot line. So it's active. So if we start off, we want to bring the leash in. It is exactly the same way we did before on a six foot leash. Now we just have to do it more often. So I start off with the exact same thing. I put the leash on my thumb, I close my hands. I run my other hand forward, bring the leash in, grip. Uh, same thing. And twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. Hmm? I have to do the seven times to shorten my leash down. Now I finally have got the entire leash in there. Now if you look at my hand, it's the same thing as before. I have one piece here on my thumb and now I just, instead of one, I have seven strains of leash in the other hand. I can pass this over into my other hand the exact same way we practiced before. There is no difference. I can pass this from left to right in the same fashion. It's just more leash now. In some ways that's actually easier in my view. But there you go. In terms of pressure and release, same thing. Pressure and release work happens right up here on this last piece. In terms of locking, same thing. I'm locking, however, just the last piece, not all of it. So if I want to do a thumb lock, I rotate around on the thumb and grip. So now I have a thumb lock. Now pressure release happens down here. If I let that go, if I want to do a finger lock, same thing. Bring my fingers up and grab, just like as before. Boom, let it back out, grab. Now. If I want to keep that lock, I can run a lot of leash out, right? Let go of that, let go of that, oops, <laughs> let go of that, and then bring that back in, bring that back in, and lock it again. So I, I can manage the leash the exact same way. On a long line, all of these techniques come in really, really handy. I would say, except for the base grip, all the locking management techniques are probably more important on the long line than on the shorter line. But you'll see once you're working with the lines. It's good to know in either case, and you should practice on the shorter one first because the locks is definitely easier with less leash. So there you go. This is long line management. Last but not least, the retractable, the devil's tool. Dog trainers hate retractable leashes. Well, not all of them, but a lot of dog trainers hate retractable leashes. And the reason a lot of dog trainers hate retractable leashes is because we see them being used poorly by many people. Somebody, uh, many people, let their dogs drag this entire leash out while they're running down the sidewalk. The dog's dragging them, dragging. Uh, um, the five pound Maltese is dragging the 100 pound person or more. And fully extractable, extract, uh, uh, extracted, lo uh, retractable on the sidewalk next to traffic. That's a crazy idea. Why, why would you? Why would you do that? People do. And we see that and we're like, oh my God. Lo Retractable should be illegal. Um, oh, you see somebody letting the dog run across the street and then a bike gets tangled up in it and the guy falls. And there's all kinds of things that can happen if you don't pay attention to this line. But that's not the proper usage of a retractable. It's like with anything. Huh? I can use it properly or I can use it improperly. We shouldn't judge tools by improper usage by the most unskilled people. That's, that's a general thing. It doesn't matter what the tool is. Huh? We shouldn't judge it by the most unskilled use by the most unskilled people. We should judge it by appropriate use by skilled people. So how do I hold on to a long line, uh, to, to a retractable? And by the way, you should look at this as a long line that's easier to handle. Because now, see, it comes out. I don't have to reel leashes in. I can just retract in and out by just moving my hand. Uh, I walk away from my dog, or my dog walks away from me. Huh? Leash comes out. Now I can lock it. There's the button on top and, and all retractables are a little different, but the principle is always the same. There is one button to lock. So you press this button down, the leash locks uh, temporarily. Now there's usually also a switch. Now in this one, which you can see this here, there's a little switch. If I push this forward, now the leash is locked permanently. I don't even have to hold the button down anymore. I can easily unlock it again, keep the lock there. And then if I'm ready to go, let it back out. So, but temporary lock, permanent lock, very easy on a retractable. Huh? So, holding on to a retractable, now if my dog is taking off or I see this extension, uh, extraction is gonna happen, 
I want to hold on in the following fashion. You bring your other hand in front of your retractable, so you hold the box, just like here, huh? and the angle of your hand is what ultimately gives you the control. You want to also pull it into your body, just like we did before with the other leash. You don't want to hold it out here. It's the same reason. More control in your body. Have one hand on the front, have one hand on the back. Pull it in. The strength comes from the hand position. It doesn't come so much from the way you grab the leash, it comes from the hand position. So, if you hold it here with your hand, make sure you don't get your fingers around that cord or the band, some have bands. And here, hold on, pull it into your body, there's a good grip, uh, and then you lock. So before you press that lock button when your dog's taken off, boom, boof. Hmm? Hand there, pull it in, press the button. You want to be ready with a good grip and stance before you press that button. Now, if I have a, oh yeah, one of the other reasons you should grab in the front is it prevents the box from splitting open. So on cheaper models, cheaper retractables, this could happen if you have a strong dog and you have the wrong kind of retractable for your dog. There are some versions where you have bolts through here that makes it way more sturdy. This is a Flexi Vario. This is uh, made in Germany. Very sturdy. I don't think that would break open, but it could break open if I put it on a 100 pound dog. This is actually a retractable for a smaller dog. So it's not rated for a 100 pound dog. That would be stupid on my part to do something like that. So if you use a Flexi that's rated for the right weight class of dog, you should be in good shape. But still, in any case, having your hand here and closing this prevents the box from breaking no matter what. So it's a safety mechanism. So let's say my leash is extracted now. I have done this and I have locked the leash. So it's locked now. I'm back here. I've locked my leash. Now I want to bring this back in, but my dog's pulling. So how do I do that? So I'm in this position. I do a finger lock. I come here forward and I do a finger lock. Boom, finger lock. Now I can let this go slack. I can let this go slack now. Unlock this, bring this forward. Lock it again. Oops, there we go locked again. Uh, bring it, hold it, run my finger lock forward, again shorten it, loosen that, there we go, bring that forward, lock it again. So now I've shortened my retractable down quite a bit using finger lock, finger lock, finger lock and reeling my leash shorter and shorter and shorter. So that's how you can manage that. A finger lock on a leash like that, even a cord like this, exact same thing as before. Now you think this cord is gonna hurt me. Uh, if you have a proper finger lock, like this, uh, it is not going to move. This leash is not going to move. It doesn't matter that this is a cord. That's why these locks are really important. Uh, with a finger lock, you can do this with a leash like that and you will not get injured if you just hold your hand closed. So, now if you are worried that you may lose the retractable, that it gets pulled out of your hand, there's a backup you could use and if you remember what I've shown you earlier with this pro tip of having the leash go around your, your body and then locking it behind you, we can do the same thing as a backup for a retractable. So I bring a regular leash. I have my retractable here. I stick the handle on the outside through the handle of the retractable that I let go for a moment. Hold the leash, hold the end. And again, I clip this together behind my back, just like I did before. Huh? So I have my nice suspenders. Now I have my retractable. I work my retractable. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do what I need to be doing. But let's just say I don't pay attention and it gets yanked out of my hand. Well, it's not going anywhere. It's on my backup now. Huh? So I'm secured now. Even if my retractable is out of my hand, my dog's not going away from me. I have time to bring my hand back into the retractable, grab it, grab it, pull it back in and get myself back under control. So this backup mechanism can be helpful if you're concerned that the retractable is pulled out of your hand. So there's one last thing that I want to show you with retractables that I learned from Jay Jack in a workshop the other day. And I thought that's just a marvelous idea. I had never thought of that. Um, and one of the reasons is probably because I never work with retractables in kennel environments. But if you do, this is a brilliant idea. So get an oval retractable that actually will fit in your back pocket of right side or left side, whatever hand is your, your dominant hand. 
and make sure the cord comes out kind of on top of the retractable, which it usually does. So that's, that's usually not the issue. Then you stick the, the retractable leash into your back pocket with a cord pointing forward. So it goes in my back pocket like here. I'm not sure if you can see this here. There you go. That's on my back pocket. And I let the piece of the retractable just hang there. Mm -hmm. Now, on this particular model, there's this extra piece that's never gonna go in the box itself. That is just this model. A lot of them retract completely. They don't have this piece. There's a reason for this piece, which we don't have to go into right now. But I have now basically a retractable in my pocket that I can reach to, pull out, and work with dogs. So I can, I can clip a dog on that I take out of a kennel or a stall. And what I do on this hand, I'll do a finger lock. Huh? Boom, finger lock here, regular leash now. Clip the dog in, handle the leash. If you prefer the other hand, well, I do it this way. Right? So put the maybe the retractable on the other side. But now I can work the dog, I bring the dog out, I do whatever I need to do with the dog. And once I'm done with it, I clip him off and boom, my leash disappears. I don't have to deal with it. So it's a beautiful way of storing a retractable in a back pocket and then work with it as we need to. So that's it. That was our basic uh, leash handling overview. I hope you found this informative and you start practicing with your leash. Get comfortable with all the grips, with passing over, with shortening, with uh, letting it back out and so forth, with the different types of leashes that you work with with your dog. Get really comfortable so you can do it without looking and you're really comfortable handling leashes. That's the point. So training this out of context, doing this without a dog, learning how to grip and handle leashes properly before you actually have to deal with, a, with an animal that you're trying to control is generally a good idea. We do this with other things in dog training, especially with the dogs. We break it down to smaller pieces. We teach concepts out of context. There is no reason we shouldn't apply that to ourselves and apply and learn some leash handling skills before we need to use leashes to accomplish training goals and outcomes. Uh, pressure and release work, when you work with me in person, I usually do pressure and release with people first. I give my client a leash, I hold the end, I play their dog for a moment, and I will, will practice the pressure and release exercises that we're gonna do as homework and we're gonna do during the session with each other before we're gonna do it with a dog. Because with a dog, it's always gonna be more tricky. The dog's gonna do things um, that are um, not following the protocol because the dog's not on board in the beginning as to what we're trying to accomplish. He doesn't know, she doesn't know. And we have to teach them, so that's the whole point. So making sure that my clients know that, I usually do it in person with them, one-on-one. -on -one. I encourage you to do the same thing with these leash handling skills. So I hope you find this informative and have fun practicing. See you next time.